Hi everyone, we got an interesting one here today. What we have here is a Macintosh Performa 6116 CD. If you can see that, a um, little bit of history of why I have this uh, old Mac is way back in 2003 when I was in college, um, college classifieds, a professor was giving it away for free. Um, I snagged it up and I was completely unable to do anything with it because of that very interesting looking video port. That's that uh, one beside the uh, SCSI port that actually looks like a parallel port. And finally, um, after it's sitting in storage for years, this thing sat in storage longer than YouTube's existed. I got it uh, in the fall of 2003, and it's been through, what, uh, 14 summers and winters? So, um, because I never had the video adapter, never powered it on, I can't remember if when I had it before if I actually fired it up or not, to just to see if it would power on. So, um, the mystery is here. I wanted to record it to see what happens uh, first thing, but finally acquired the necessary video adapter and if you see this that's not even a standard VGA adapter I guess it's an Apple adapter but then I also needed one of these so I do have a CRT VGA back here I don't know if it'll go through all the adapters or not we'll try to do what we can with it um, we're gonna give a little bit of a rundown look at the internal components and if it gets working, this is the only Mac software I have. It's SimCity 2000 for Mac on Floppy. This is the best PC game of all time. Age of Empires is a close second, but that's for another day. We'll see if we can get it working with these uh, old disks from 93. So, that being said, a um, little bit of a background. Uh, yesterday, before I made this video, I kind of just did a quick... Uh, look up i did find the manual and an old mac site that kind of gives you the specs and everything on it uh you'll see the link for those below this was released in the summer of 95 it's a power pc um cd drive obviously i think eight megs of ram by default it's probably about the equivalent of a i'd say a 486 or a, um original pentium and that's all i could really say for quick specs like i said if you want to see more details of it look below um, as far as the accessories go um, these adapters i just acquired but when this was given away to me i got an apple one button mouse like they all used to be the apple keyboard which has the mouse port here it's not it looks like ps2 i don't know if they're compatible or not but um, since I have the Apple mouse and keyboard, we're good to go there. And interestingly enough, this is an external modem that looks like it doesn't take any external power. Um, I'm not too familiar with the way Apple did things because I've been a PC user since the 3.1 days. Um, the only experience I have with these old Macs is um, when I was in grade school and middle school. That's really all the school had. Um, and if you're curious, the OS on this, I think by default was Mac OS 7.5.1. So that's a little bit of the history lesson of how I acquired this, um, kind of what I learned about it. Um, next, we're gonna go ahead here and look at the internal and external ports. All right, so as far as the front of the case goes, we have, it's a power button and it's a hard power button. It goes directly to the power supply, unlike uh, most newer computers that it's a soft switch that goes to the motherboard. So I don't think the soft switches were invented when this was released in 95. We have the floppy drives, and one thing that really irritated me about these old floppy drives on Macs was no physical eject button. Uh, you could probably use a pinhole there, but I didn't know that as a kid, and it really bothered me. Then we have, I think this is a 2X SCSI CD drive, and of course the Macintosh logo with the uh, model on it. On the bottom here, it looks like we have just a system speaker. I believe that's the cooling fan for the power supply. 
Uh, there's really not much else on the bottom there. Sides are pretty blank as well. These ports on the back, when I looked at the manual, kind of had to uh, see exactly what they were. I guess these two little buttons here that kind of look like record and play, what they are is, uh, I guess if you're having an issue with the system, you can just run diagnostics and whatnot. We have a microphone in, we have an audio in. This is the keyboard port, I think it's called ADP, like Apple Desktop Peripherals or something like that. And there's only one of these ports because on that Apple keyboard, like I showed her earlier, uh, the mouse gets daisy chained to it. This uh, phone looking icon, that goes to the external modem. This is a printer port, much different from a parallel port on the uh, PC equivalent. This video port, which I said was the main reason why I never actually got the system fired up. This looks like a regular old parallel port, but it's actually a SCSI port. And then this, I believe the manual said it was some kind of monitor port. I didn't really look deep into it, but like I said, the links for all that stuff's at the bottom. And then we have the power supply here, the power that goes to the wall, and the pass-through if you want to plug your monitor in. Most newer power supplies never have these anymore. I don't know if there's a reason for that or if it just fell out of favor, but even old PCs like would always have that pass-through power supply, but this one didn't for some reason. Okay, with that being said, we'll tear it open, see what we have inside. I think it's just these two clips here, it opens right up. So we look here, um, we have a regular SCSI 50 pin Apple branded hard drive, um, 700 megabytes, that's exactly what the manual said was included with it. And a Sony uh, 2X drive, can't go wrong with Sony, I'm a Sony fanboy, but not with video games, they're consumer electronics. And then we have a floppy connector here, it doesn't look like a regular floppy drive connector, I'm not sure what Apple used for their floppy, but it is a 3.5 floppy as it shows. We got the power supply here, um, it looks like there's a date code on here, but 95 2 that's probably 1995. Uh, who knows what else, and a serial number, of course. We look on the motherboard here. The PowerPC CPU doesn't even need a fan to get it to run. Um, reminds me of the old 486s. Um, I don't know if there's any Pentium 1s that can work without a fan. I remember my first Pentium 1 did have a fan. These, I think, are uh, memory expansion modules, but I also read in the manual that um, there's 8 megabytes of memory also soldered onto the motherboard, so I don't know if that was updated from the user that owned this or not. And then a mystery expansion card. I couldn't really find much info on that either. And then over here, of course, we have the SCSI connector, and it looks like uh, the, the hard drive and the and the CD drive share the same SCSI connector, which I think with this old SCSI you could connect up to 15 devices, maybe 7. Um, little before when I really started to get into stuff. And we also have, this looks like a battery here, looks like a small AAA or something like that. Um, who knows if, the I, if it's a clock battery, it's probably almost completely dead if it works at all. And then... These look like EDO memory slots, so um, I don't know, like I said, over there, what we looked at earlier might have also been memory expansion, but I'm not sure on that. Um, like I said, the manuals might let us know, and then, interestingly enough, here's an AMD branded chip, which I don't know what that would be, because PowerPC architecture, I know, was based on Motorola, so I don't know the origins behind that, but... That might have e this might have even been before AMD was making x86 processors. Um, everything else on here, you know, just motherboard details and whatnot. There's some Texas Instrument chips here as well. I don't know much about Apple's relationship with uh, Texas Instruments, but, you know, they definitely are on the main boards here. And with Apple only making Apple hardware and virtually no one else, um, that's definitely, they must have had a relationship at one time or another. So that's pretty much the inside of the computer. Um, now's the moment of truth. We're going to try to fire this up and see what happens. All right, we're good now. Uh, I'm looking right at a fire extinguisher, so um, anything goes south, we know what we're going to do here. 
All I have to do is plug in the power and we'll see what happens here. There it goes. It fired up. There's that old Mac sound. Oh, and there's a stamp code date, August 22nd, 95. No video yet. I'm not surprised, though. And by the way, this CRT was brand new in box when I acquired it in 2016. Um, it worked last time I tried it on a Windows 2000 system, but you never know if it's just going through too many adapters or it doesn't like the resolution or what. There could be a number of reasons this won't work, but I will assess that here in a moment. But there is definitely no video signal. Let's see if the drive opens. Drive opens, no disk in the drive. I don't see a hard drive LED to let us know if the hard drive's working. Maybe one of these diagnostic buttons will help us. I can hear the hard drive rattle. No click, so it doesn't at least, it's at least not clicking. I can feel the heat from the power PC processor. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but that might be an OS startup sound. So maybe the OS loaded. Uh, I just have issues with the video itself. Unless that crash means the system crashed. It could be that too. Like I said, I'm not too experienced with mid-90s Macs, so. We'll try one of these other diagnostic buttons. There's that first startup sound we heard. Hey, look at that. I heard a click. Ho oh, ho! Goofy resolution, but there's video. Welcome to Macintosh. Mac OS starting up. I don't know what button I pressed to make it work, but somehow it did. With uh, that being said, I'm going to let this fire up, and then I will make a second video of what's all on the system yet. And then we'll try to install SimCity 2000. I'm so happy it's working. Thanks, guys. Bye.